bring up. So I'm doing about 65 or so. Light load on the engine. A lot of timing in it. Now, natural tendencies. This is why you don't need an SCTX4 tuner. You can just get a regular OBD plug tuner and just see what your car does naturally. And this is any car. Not just a Mustang, not just... Uh, I was even doing this when I had my Volkswagen. So, light load. Here we go. 45 degrees of timing. As load increases, timing will decrease, as you will see here. So, again. There we go. Load increases, timing is being pulled away. This is very similar to how vacuum advances work on distributors. So that was weird, I saw a positive, but I just saw a negative three earlier. So let's go about 80. There we go. So negative. Knock. Negative knock, very different. Kind of not really in the realm of what I want to talk to or get into on this video, but in my case with the Mustang, negative knock means the knock sensor is not seeing any kind of knock activity. So with it being negative, it's actually commanding you put more timing in as the RPM and load increases. But initially, here, load increase, time is taken away. Real simple. All right, here we go. We got another one here. And I'm gonna go over ignition timing. You already saw it in the title. You're already here, so I'm gonna just go over a quick rundown of what's going on and kind of a a general look over as what people tend to say or or refer to when they talk about timing I'm gonna make the drill make sense I have the drill here I'm gonna make it all but make sense with that but don't don't mind the the fish sticks and tapatio okay times are tough all right so I'm gonna make, be making more of these be on the lookout Ooh, that's spicy so when, when referring to ignition timing these are the two things that you have to watch out for first or at least know what. You have to know what TDC is, and you have to know what BDC is. TDC is the topmost rotation, the highest point that the piston will reach in the cycle that it moves. If you're mechanically inclined enough to know that the piston does travel up and down a cylinder and does have a highest point and a lowest point, you already know that. But for those that don't, here it is right here. It's referred to as TDC, top dead center. Right here, BDC, bottom dead center. Now, you can look at the stuff even with an OEM car. We could have your regular daily, your Sentra, your Saturn Wagon, your Honda Civic, your whatever. And you can look in your scan tool and see Spark Advance. Now, when people talk about timing, when they talk about, hey, I'm running 20 degrees of timing, 18 degrees of timing, 32 degrees of timing, they're referring to ignition timing before top dead center so bottom dead center as the engine is turning over it is going to raise it is going to raise to top dead center go back down you know you have you have your intake compression power and exhaust and it moves on so for example 28 degrees before top dead center when they say i'm running 28 degrees of timing for example i'm going to compare it to my car which i'm on pump gas and you'll see that when you're data logging or when you're going out there or when the tuner says, hey, you're not seeing enough timing based on, you know, your fuel quality is shit or what, whatever the case is, they're referring to before top dead center. Piston is coming up. Now, in degrees, it's refer referring to as in the piston is going to move around. The crankshaft moves around in a circle, 360 degrees. So as you're coming down, down here, the piston is coming up and coming up, coming up 28 degrees before top dead center is when that ignition fires and the spark plug ignites the flame front and the piston is and the piston goes down so just like i did on the last one i got a little bit more detailed board right here oh yeah i forgot how to make load make sense so electric gun what's up cliff i only got one hand to record and one hand to do this don't, don't make fun of my shoes so motor that's a specific speed you put it under load
that's pretty much load. Okay, so with those two things in mind, this is a general overview of what goes on and what people refer to when they talk about ignition timing. Ignition timing, sorry. So, two very common examples right here. Basic, basic, basic Crown Victoria and a Whipple Mustang. Two very common cars. So, spark plug gap, 54 thousandths, spark plug gap of around 32 thousandths, give or take. Because what the Whipple is gonna depend on, you know, how much boost you're running, what fuel you're running, etc., etc., whatever. So, in a general review, this here, this on gasoline will never change. This is a rough number right here that when you light that gasoline, it is going to expand, the flame front is going to expand and burn within two milliseconds. Very fast, very rapid. So, when you hear tuners of going out there and using low quality fuel, desensitizing knock sensors, going out there and blowing cars up because they want to, you know, send it. It's not really the right way to do it. So, here, I have a breakdown of the electrode, and the, I, I believe the correct term for this is the anchor. Okay, I could be wrong. Whatever. Oh my god, why am I losing my breath? Maybe because this is hot. Whew. Or I'm just talking a lot. So I know there's a whole bunch of crazy stuff that goes on, and, and this may look like a lot, but it's pretty simple, and I'll show you right here. As compression, compression or load will increase on the motor, for example, basic Crown Victoria, Whipple Mustang. This is why I have these two cars here, because they're very different from each other. Crown Vic with a 4.6, very basic, you're not going to do anything with it. Whipple Mustang, the motor is very efficient. The supercharger is very efficient. You can make a lot of good power. So, compression goes up. The more air you're feeding into this and the higher efficiency this car is, or the motor is, the less gap you're going to need. This is due to the fact, and you see 54, 32, this is because you see here, the more compression you have inside the cylinder, the more you're throwing into the cylinder, air, fuel, everything, it's going to be harder for the spark to actually happen. And if you look here, at sea level, we have 14.7 pounds per square inch around us at all times. This is why when you, when you see racers refer to DA levels, negative DA, positive DA, it refers to this number. At sea level, 14.7 pounds a square inch are surrounding us at all times. Naturally aspirated. Crown Vic, 54 thousandths. Very efficient setup. It, it's going to burn the gas, no problem. It's going to run smooth, have a good clean idle. It's fine. So this is X amount of compression. We're just going to say X amount because I, I don't know the total amount. I'm not going to go into CFM rating of all that kind of stuff and everything. But sea level, again, Whipple, 10 pounds. 10 pounds above this is, when you refer to 10 pounds, this is 10 pounds above ambient pressure, 14.7 pounds a square inch. You are forcing that into the motor. You have X amount of compression, which is probably two to three times more than what's in this Crown Vic. Both of these cars at sea level. Both of these cars uses the same fuel. So you will see the 54 thousandths gap here because you don't need a smaller gap. You don't, you don't need that. It's gonna be fine. If you were to run a 54 thousandths gap on this car, I guarantee you, this car is gonna run like dog turds. Which is why when you call someone like Brisk and a, a, a company that I've referred plenty of friends to, well, Greg actually, I told him, yo, use Br Brisk plugs, hit them up, they'll get you squared away. He has not had a problem. So, down here, 28 to 32, give or take, because I know there's a few different pulley sizes, 10 pounds, yada, yada, yada. And this is why if you even look at it from an OEM level all the way up to NHRA or some really st stupid, crazy, badass stuff that you see at like TX2K, when you're running an insane amount of compression inside of an engine or, or, or amount of cylinders, you see these crazy magnetos that they have. They have these, because 
they have to generate as much electricity as they can to transfer that spark because amperage is what makes the spark happen, not voltage. So when you see people say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm talking about big boy stuff. They're like, hey, 60 pounds, the car is running fine, but I won't, when I creep up to 70, 80 pounds, you know, the coils, they're not really happy. I think I got to change coil packs, and that's, that's actual facts because they have to create such an increased amount of amperage to jump this gap when you're going from, you know, a Whipple on 10 pounds to a twin turbo setup with a build motor, sleeve and O-rings, and you're throwing 80, 90 pounds at that stuff, build it everything. You know, this is where stuff gets really crazy. So, it's something that you you can look at, and you could even plug in your OEM device, or uh, what do I call? What's the thing for? There's like these things called. Uh, there's an app called Torque, I think. You can plug into your OBD2 port, and then you can just look at all your factory PIDs, and you know, parameter identification data. I think is the correct term for it. And you just go out, be cruising, look at it, and just observe. That's what I did when I had my Volkswagen. I would just observe and see what's going on and see what the car would naturally do. Because as you can see here, as load increases, timing is going to go down. And this all comes back to how an old school small block Chevy would work. And I say that because if you don't know how an engine operates on, on the basic of basic standards seeing how the newer stuff is going to work is not going to make sense to you you know that's why i mean i'm not saying go out and try and be an expert on everything i'm not saying i'm an expert on everything but i'm pretty goddamn knowledgeable about all this stuff so that's a, that's why the same way it works with a vacuum advanced distributor vacuum advanced car is at idle making a really good amount of vacuum timing advances and you'll see it if you're cruising down the street in my six volt um just cruising, you're going to see a high amount of timing because you have no load. You have a high amount of load, you're going to have a decreased amount of timing. So a vacuum advance is very similar to how a tuning or an OEM programming system works in an everyday car. Quick rundown, it's pretty simple. I'll, I'll show you, you know, more, more stuff later on, but this is a quick breakdown. And one thing I want to say before I, I cut all of this, right here everyone has seen a spark plug with three little things on the side of it all right this is a law of electricity straight up law you will never have at any given time three spark three sparks going on at one time ever the electricity will only follow the path of least resistance so for example say if all three of these are gapped at the same gap give or take and you're talking down to the very very thousand ten thousandths of an inch and say it goes off and fires on this guy and this guy is the spark for 30 ish thousand miles now what does happen over time is that the gap here will actually increase because there is a there is a spark happening you know when you go down to if, if you really put this thing under a freaking microscope it, it, the gap will slowly get bigger. So as that gap gets bigger over time, give or take 30, 30 K miles, it's not going to spark here anymore. It's now going to spark over at this guy. So that's why a plug like this, people refer to it as a 100,000 mile plug because every 30,000, essentially most cars get a spark plug change. This is why they call it a 100,000 mile plug because it's going to go one, two, and then three. So... That's kind of the quick run rundown on uh, on that. Oh, and um, one thing I was gonna say before I end all of it, and I, I, I'm gonna make this I'm gonna make this make sense, is that when you go back to oh jeez oh don't fall don't fall ignition timing, you want this to happen before this number what essentially it means is that when it sparks and you cause this flame front to start to you want the flame front to throw down the piston this rotating assembly is going to turn no matter what it's all mechanically together it's not it's not like one piston is going to be physically going faster than another one it's all it's all tied into the same system 
you want this to happen at a very precise moment where that flame front explodes and throws the piston down and forces it down at the right moment where you make peak power. That's pretty much that. So when you, when you do contact a company and you're really, you know, back and forth on it, if they really know what they're doing, I mean, if these people are making spark plugs and their stuff is out there and cars that are running fives, sixes, you know, kind of take their advice for it. So that's a quick rundown. Hope you like it. There'll be more to come.